All right. So this is a crash course for food webs and energy pyramids. So first, let's take down some uh, notes on some vocab, what ecosystems are. That's what we're talking about. An ecosystem is an environment that many organisms inhabit and interact in. There are many different types of ecosystems, and each organism plays a key role in making sure that it's functioning properly. Basically, all that is is like the environment that organisms live in. All right, we have some key characters in our ecosystem. So the producers are all of the plants in an ecosystem. They're called autotrophs because they can make their own food directly from energy from the sun. We have our primary consumers who are the organisms who consume the producers. Many of them only consume plants, so they are called herbivores. Consume is just a fancy way to say eat. We have our secondary consumers which are all of the organisms who consume the primary consumers. They eat only meat, so they are carnivores. So like our snake who eats the rabbit, our raccoon who eats the grasshopper. Animals who are consumers are also called heterotrophs because they do not make their own food. They have to consume something in order to get energy. We also have our top consumers, which are also called the top predators. These are at the top of the food web. They don't have any natural predators, meaning nothing else consumes them, nothing eats them. So some examples are the sharks at the top of the aquatic food web and bears on the top of the terrestrial or land food web. And we also have decomposers. So these are the cleanup crew of the ecosystem. They break down dead organisms and recycle nutrients back in the ecosystem. So like our mushrooms breaking down this dead fox. All right, the way we organize these ecosystems to show how things are related is through a food web. This combines interconnecting food chains to show how all organisms in an ecosystem interact with each other. So all of these live in the same general area, and this is how they all interact with each other. All right, we have producers. They use the sun's energy and convert it into glucose. This process is called photosynthesis. We know this, we learned it back in unit three. We also have some energy transfers. Plants use the majority of the glucose to convert into ATP, and they use that to grow, reproduce, make more plants. They only store a small amount in their bodies. So when the rabbit comes along to eat the plant, only 10% of the energy gets passed along to the rabbit. So in order to get the energy it needs, a rabbit's gotta eat a lot of plants. The rabbit then uses most of its energy to live, grow, reproduce, so when the fox consumes the rabbit, it gets an even smaller percentage of the original energy. Only 10% now from the rabbit is passed on to the fox. So the fox does not get a lot of energy. That's why it's got to keep eating. We organize the flow of energy in things called energy pyramids. These show how energy is transferred in an ecosystem. The sun is our original source over here. And producers have the most energy in an ecosystem because they get that energy directly from the sun. Energy decreases as you go up on an energy pyramid. As energy travels up a food chain, only 10% is passed on to the next level. The group with the most amount of energy, like we said, is our producers. Only 10% is passed on each time. So oh, go ahead and write this in your notes. But if we start with our graphs, Let's say our producer has 100% energy. Grasshopper eats it and only gets 10% of that. Then our mouse comes and eats the grasshopper and actually ends up only with 1% of the original energy because it only gets 10% from the grasshopper. Our snake then only gets 0.1% of this overall energy because it only gets 10% from the mouse. It keeps decreasing each time. So our producers have the most amount of energy and our predators have the least amount of energy. Okay, how to read food webs. We have our top consumers at the top. Um, go ahead, flip to this part in your notes packet. We have our top consumers at the top. There are predators. So for this example, the hawk is consuming the fish. Therefore, in a food web, we can conclude that if the arrow is pointing towards an organism, it is doing the consuming. If an arrow is pointing away from an organism, it is being consumed. So think of it like if the fish is following the arrow into the hawk's mouth. All right, what organisms do each of the top consumers in the ecosystem consume? So go ahead and write that in your notes. We already talked about the hawk, but go ahead and write down 
what the bear consumes and the fox consumes. The bear is done for you. The bear consumes the fish because the arrow is pointing from the fish towards the bear. Go ahead and write in your notes about the fox. Who does the fox consume and how do you know? All right, now we're gonna talk about what happens when food webs get messed up. So what do you think would happen to the population of bears if the trout went extinct in the ecosystem? There's no more trout. So if the trout went extinct in the ecosystem, the bear population would do what? What would happen to them if our trout went extinct? Go ahead and write what you think would happen to the bear population if there were no more trout. Okay, this next part, um, you'll see for number seven, the bears are not the only ones that are affected by the trout. So if the trout goes extinct, I want you to also write, how do you think it would affect the hawk? And how do you think it would affect the smaller fish? Go ahead and write that in your notes for number seven, because I'm going to come over and check it when you're done. All right. Now, if the bear population goes extinct, the trout population will do what? So now we have no more bears. The trout population will increase because the bears will no longer consume them. No more bears to eat the trout. So if the trout is going to increase, if the trout population then increases due to the extinction of bears, what do you think will happen to the hawk population? So we know that we got rid of the bears. Our trout is increasing. What do you think is going to happen in the hawk? Write that in your notes. Okay. Go ahead and finish the rest of the questions comparing this to energy pyramids in your notes and then check in with me to get the next direction and for your notes grade.